Welcome to Spine Chat Focus Topic, where you'll get some really good information without the hype in about five minutes or so. Today we're going to be talking about discogenic pain. Uh, the lumbar disc has two parts, an inner portion that is called the nucleus and an outer portion termed the annulus. The inner portion has uh, high water content and is pre-pressurized. The outer portion is very tough, compact, and a bit more elastic. And these two parts of the disc work together. The pressurization from the inner part of the disc is distributed equally to these outer fibers. When that happens, there is a tightening of these outer fibers that resists buckling and provides the multi-directional stability that is necessary for good function. The disc is also richly supplied by nerves and it circles the entirety of the disc. When these nerves are activated, pain signals are transmitted and pain is experienced. This occurs in two ways, through stretch or tension or the release of chemical inflammatory substances and these two processes go hand in hand. Discs and tires share some similarities. Uh, each require internal pressurization as well as a strong external support network for their stability. You'll notice on the right here this defect in the tire. It's very unlikely that that occurred because of the increased pressure inside the tire, but much more likely that the external restraining support system has failed. And this is a similar mechanism that happens in lumbar disc damage. The initial stage of disc injury, which is often asymptomatic, is when the disc loses its water content. And you can see this darkening here that's termed desiccation. The lost water content leads to changes in pressurization and asymmetrical distribution of loads. This asymmetry leads to tissue failure. And here you'll notice that the fibers on the back part of the disc have separated where they should be much more compact. When tissues are injured, inflammatory chemicals are released and the combination of those two things leads to a disc that has lowered resistance for normal pressures and mechanical strain. In diagnosing disc injuries I look first to the mechanism of uh, involvement which usually involves flexion, lifting, and twisting. Symptoms are typically much worse when the spine is under loaded conditions and I like to see a 50% improvement in symptoms when the spine is unloaded such as when someone lays on their back or stomach. Back pain is usually equal to or much greater than leg pain and if there is pain in the legs it rarely goes below the knee. Temporary modifications involve avoiding positions that increase disc pressure or movements and activities that create excessive strain. What I do have patients engage in is controlled mobility. Uh, mobility is much better than complete inactivity because it promotes better nutritional exchange within the disc. One of my favorite positions is that of passive, passive spinal extension. It's often referred to as a McKenzie protocol and if you want you can YouTube this for some very good examples. Sometimes uh, surgery is needed to be considered and in these cases diagnostic scrutiny is greatly heightened. Uh, three reasons for this. Not all abnormalities seen on an MRI correlate with pain. Uh, even more confusing is that internal disc damage can occur with very minimal abnormalities seen on the MRI. And lastly, all spinal structures cause very similar pain patterns. And before a disc is operated on, it's very important to make sure these non-disc structures have been excluded as a big source of pain. The good news is most people recover conservatively, usually over a few days to perhaps a week or so. Recurrences are possible and not uncommon. And in these situations, people need to look for the underlying mechanisms and try to correct them as best they can. A medicine, if taken, although helpful for the pain, does nothing to heal injured tissue or inherent weaknesses of the spine. And if surgery uh, becomes a stronger option, having realistic expectations is very critical. Surgery is designed to make a bad situation better. It's rare that surgery will return a person to 100% uh, complete functionality. 
Thank you for your time. I'd appreciate your comments. Uh, so you can connect with me at spineline.net, and we will see you next time, hopefully, on spine chat uh, focus topics.